The Solitude and Desire of Daniel Lucero. This entire book uh, uh, comes in three pieces. The first piece is uh, letters to a woman in New Orleans while the boy is 17. Uh, the first part of the novel uh, are all letters of number one on the right hand side is a young boy who's put in prison who has never lived life and he, he happens along, he happens to, to get correspondence with a woman who has lived all of life. And so she uh, sort of nurtures him into his fantasy and allows him to write. Second part of the book is when he comes out of prison and it details the first uh, 10 years of life after prison. This part of the book that I'm reading from now is, is the end of the book and it's, um, it, it talks about his healing. This poem here, in a crazy kind of convoluted way, talks about how as human beings we heal ourselves in the most simplest and unexpected moments in life. So, um, I almost read you the wrong poem. <laughs> okay. Uh, I went down yesterday to fix a leak in my tire. Off Bridge Street, there's a place 90 cents flats fixed. Smeary black paint on old corrugated wood plank between two ball tires. I go in, an old black man with a Jackie Gleason hat, greased, soft, with a mashed cigar in mouth. And another old Chicano man working the other nomadic hissing tire changer. The walls are black with tire soot, blown black dust everywhere, rows and rows of worn tires on knotted board racks, air hoses snailing and looped over the floor. And I greet the two old men, yo, how's it going today? And they look at me as if I just gave them a week to live. I got a tire that needs a tube. Rudy, a young Chicano, emerges from the black part of the room, ponytailed and plump, walks me out to my truck, looks at the tire. It'll cost you five dollars to take it off and change it. And I nod. And he tells the old Chicano man to pull out that roller jack with a long steel handle, and I wait in the middle of the grunting oval tire changing machines while the old guy goes out and returns with my tire. And he doesn't look like he likes it, but looks at me like a disgruntled carny handling the Ferris wheel for the millionth time, and I'm just another ache in the arm. And I watch the two old men work the tire machines, step on the foot lever that sends the bar around, flipping loose the tire from the rim, and I wonder what brought these two old men to work here on this gray evening in February. Are they ex-cons? Drunks? Addicts? He whips my tube out. Oye, Rudolfo, mira, no podemos pasar este hombre. He sort of whispers in a yell looking down, and I see a gaping hole in the tube. Can't patch that, Rudy says. But we got a pile of old tubes over here, and we'll do it for $10. And I think he might be taking me. And something hedges me away from that, and I watch the machines work, the splish of air, the final begrudging of rubber let loose, and then the holy clank of steel bar against steel. And ever gently, the old Chicano man, instead of throwing the bar on the floor, takes the iron bar, wipes it clean of rubber bits and oil, and slides it gently into his waist belt. He wiped the bar with the rag hanging from his waist in a way I've only seen mothers wipe their infants' mouths. And I wonder where they live, these two old men. And I turn and watch MASH on the TV suspended from the ceiling. Six o'clock news comes on, Huntington Beach blackened with oil. Rudy comes up behind me, says, it's a shame they do that to our shores. All they got to do is build a ship with a double shell. And I'm startled, but pleased. And suddenly realize how I love these working men in the half dark with ball tires, like some medieval hunchbacks in a dungeon. They eat soup 
and scrape along in their lives. How can they live, I wonder, on 90 cents a tire tube chain? And I'm pleased to be with these workers. Yeah, the old Chicano man's mumbling at me how cheap I am. When he learns outside my four tires are bald and my spare is flat. Shaking his head at my cheapness as he works the used tube into the tire well. I notice his heels chew to the nails, fingernails black face old and weary stairwell of a room and board hotel downtown given over to drunks and derelicts that kind of a stairway face hand worn by leaning weight on it wooden step foot grooved by hard souled men the kind of face condemned by life to live out more days in futility and that small reserve wherever it lies gives shelter to his meager dreams and I bid goodbye to the black man, chomping his cigar stub, and the Chicano man with his head down, and I feel ashamed I can't live their lives a while for them, but grateful they're there. And I grow to respect such men who have stories that will never be told, that can tell me a hope and dreams and bring back to me my simple boyish days when men in oily pants and grubby hands talked in rough tones and worked at simple work, getting us three meals a day the hard way. And they live in an imperfect world, unlike men who got money, who have places to put the shame. These men got none. Others put shame on New Plains and Vegas, and these men got none but to put the shame on their woman, their mothers, their kids, themselves, unlike men who can put the shame on a new car, a condo, a bank account, so they never have to say, face the shame. These men got no place to put it. And I thought of the time my brother betrayed me, leaving me at 14 when we vowed we'd be together. He left to rid to live with rich folks. And I was taken to the detention center with no place to live. And I became a juvie filled with rage at my brother who left me alone. And these men reminded me of those who made choices never to leave their brothers. And I looked at them in my head and saw shame again with no place to go but in his face and in a man's hands, and in his work, and his silence. And as I drove away near in my farm, I saw a water sprinkler shooting an arc of water far over the fence and the grass. It was intended to water. In the middle of winter, the fountain of water hit a weed stickered spot that grew the only single flower anywhere around. In the middle of rubble brush and stones, the water hit and touched a dormant seed that blossomed itself and to what it was, despite the surroundings or the season. And something made sense to me, and I'm not sure what. Maybe taking what came my way was what I felt about life that day. But that night in my dream, I cried for my brother as he was leaving me. And all the words I used to use against myself, like rotten, no good, fault, failure. Oh, my tears poured out of me in my dream. And I wept for my brother, screaming, don't leave. And when I turned after he left, and I reached for my sister, and she was with a friend, I wept in my dream because she was not there when I needed her. And all my tears, how I wept, my feeling, my pain, my abandonment, all my tears became that arc of water. And I became the flower by sheer accident in the middle of nowhere, just blossoming. This last one, 
uh, is part of this novel. And, um, but it was a, an experiment on my part to try to deal with uh, what we would call, uh, we would call uh, all the killing going on with the kids and the drugs and all of that. I really wanted to try to write something from the perspective of this character that would try to explain why they hate and why they kill. And um, so I wrote this, and this is in the novel a sort of exercise that the, that the boy is doing. Um, what ultimately saves him is love for his children. So I tried, uh, without compromising, right, the various feelings that he might feel at various ages. And it's called Healing Earthquakes. Um, when Black Elk was alive, uh, that was a very sacred name that he would give to f people that I knew that were able to heal the emotional earthquakes that they had lived through and experienced. So I called this Healing Earthquakes. I am eight years old. Black, brown, and white pigs approach the grain pail my uncle shakes and in his other hand draws a pistol shooting the brown one in the brain as its brothers guzzle blood pooling in the trough. That's how life is my uncle says, brothers drinking brothers' blood in the streets. And I took that to heart. I'm 10 years old, and I walk the chop block streets with a rooster's tail strut, razored for a fight, living each moment up like a broken hydrant burst in water children splash and giggle in. While across town, marble fountains gazelle, bridal train gardens drain abundantly over spear-tipped walls. Where a butlered child in his opulent estate gazes into Christmasing paperweight on a stack of investment papers on father's desk. Accompanied by a scalpel fanged dober, his pet sniffs the warm breeze for intruders while he plays ring around the roses with Grecian guests in the garden whose stone brows supplicate with laureled wisdom. The only answer they have, imprison those kids burning and gunning in the streets. And it's then I realized it's rich against poor because nobody cares, so I don't care. What I'll find to eat or where to sleep, home and under street lights, throwing dirt clods at hornets' nests, unafraid of being stung, I scheme to avenge my poverty and vow to gash unmercifully with a bicycle chain spineless attorneys who take advantage of misery, rob executives in limousines, sample and heroin off horse thighs, mug preppies with golden smiles whose gutter glares condemn me, and all the rest of you who never cracked a soup line biscuit or had a court gavel crush your life and your father's life and your mother's life, you better know that I imagine violent scenes against you, praying to my saints, melt my pain red hot so I can hammer sharp, take you down to darkness where I live. I promise to impale your heads on La Virgen de Guadalupe's moon sickle one night. You see, I'm 12 years old now, and I'm no good. 
dime bag and Peruvian flakes and inhale in my glue rag, you can't chase me from the street, stop my hand from selling drugs to suited customers, because in my square white paper lives God, ideal God, you see, who gives reprieve from my earthly hell for a heroin heaven. Take Lucky and Mikey and Eagle Boy, just homeboys trashed on a stack of county jail corpses. They understood life was a sewer grate where their dignity poured down with discarded litter. And they knew that crack creates light when all you have is darkness. You see, and I'm learning that cocaine is the line between God and me when hopeless days avalanche in the rock piles of despair, blocking my heart from feeling anymore, breaking it into pieces of nothing, because I'm no good. And I go preach nothing door to door, just a strong kid full of nothing, you see. In nothing do I ask blessing, to nothing do I pray, and I ask nothing forgive my wrongs against others, and I sure hope that nothing helps when I take my vengeance. Fourteen years old, at the outdoors boxing coliseum, after crowds go home and the ring removed, a shadow box, invisible opponents in the moon ring above the sportscaster's booth and raise my own hand as champion. I join my homeboys against a rival gang, skip bleachers over handrails out of breath, and we hold court in the field with bats, pipes, chains, knuckles, guns, and a death game. Every kid has to have a five-ace winning heart or die with a poker player's bluffing hand. Because I don't care anymore. Because no one cares. And prison don't scare me. Death ain't nothing but an eight ball roll on the break. And my life is a pop-up. Sails into each day beyond anyone's catch. I hop, chalk, crime scene sidewalks. Flee in police over backyard fences from guard dogs down scuffed alleys where clapping windows and shutting doors applaud me as I slide under a strip car home plate and hear the news Jojo and Sparky got shot. And later I X their names off building scorecard walls for dead. And at 16, puro vato loco. With my primordial tribal talk, que hubo, corazón en la tranza, y que onda de aquellas, carnal? Just a brown fight and get down impromptu, warrior. Lip pursed, ooh, and fever to defy you. Clicking tap shoes on sidewalks, heel to toe and chin to chest. T-shirt rolled to beer midriff. Paul made hair back, low hugging hip khakis, ink crossed on my hand, bandana around my head, top button tied on my Pendleton. I cruise lean and mean, and my gangster signs that you mad dog behind your tinted BWM glass, you better know are a haunting warning. The streets are gonna flow with your blood one day. You see, because I learned American history, not like you. I learned it around a water bucket talk and listening to mule tongue growers mutter holy wise. They stepped and fenced our lands off mountain to valley. And I clacked my hole in the chili grower's dirt on partial skeletons of my native people buried in hobble chains. And in brand and iron noons, I cut lettuce for the soft palmed owners Businessmen posing as frontiersmen, bronc buckled cattlemen and ranchers, steer horn truck radios tuned to religious broadcasts, blaring glory just to their godliness. But you know, at 17 years old, I'm still no good. But my memories come back to haunt me now. In my bed, alone at night, I can still hear them grown ups looming over me. God hates you, Spick. God hates you. You're a dirt boy. Dirt. And even dirt grows weeds, but you, you're dirt that don't grow nothing but more dirt. Oh, and that memory comes back to me when I was beat black at nine. Wood paddle whizzing against my butt. 
and I tried to touch the washcloth to the welted bruises on my legs and back, but winced under the shower nozzle, cursing authority, hating society, telling me every time, I'm no good, I'm no good, making my young heart nothing but the severed head of an outlaw. I pickled in a jar of liquor and drugs just to numb the hurt. And man, I tried purging the shame for being born. I OD'd, I was stabbed and shot, just wanting to believe that I was bad because it was better than falling into that darkness where nothing existed but more darkness. I wanted to exist, you see, just as dirt, but someone, even no good, just dirt. And then at 19, I started rebuilding my life. Staying away. And then last night I got the urge to get high and did. Put pistol to my head and I played roulette. My bloodshot drunkard's eyes seething rage that my garden angel didn't want me dead. And the dirt in the yard pleaded for children's laughter and my children's tricycle treads scribbled, you're always gone, and whiskey and drugs, you're never here to play or help us grow, and the house has no heat, there's no light, there's no food. And when I walked into the cold house and heard my babies crying, it chiseled on the headstone of my bones, his need for me to be a father. Wobbled to a stop when I picked him from the crib, Inhaled his milky aroma, patting and kissing him, walking him back and forth in the cold, freezing living room in the hot shade of my flesh. I breathed warmth on him, holding him to my chest, humming a deep chest hymn that Grandma taught me. Bendito, bendito, bendito sea Dios. Los ángeles cantan y daban a Dios. La 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 la. And his tiny hand flexes a wing, unwrinkling from the cocoon for flight and then fossilizes in the stone of my arms and holding him so tight I begin to think how I was two men with one life. I love my baby, care about his feelings. I want to live at home and be a family man and grow old with one woman. But the warrior bears thorny teeth at domesticity, slurs in disgust at the dreamer's naivety that he can ever make it here, and wants to brawl unafraid of dying young. But then tonight, my infant is me and I am he. I see me as I was, innocent and perfect, my whole life ahead of me. And in him, I see he can become me, and I'm no good. And remembering grandma's humming tune, when she was scared, I hum him, holding tight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And melt us into one, hug humming him, until dawn thaws frost down casement windows in the stucco cracks, and the stray hounds croon and ruts, yowling coal from jaws, tooth scratching stickers from paws. I walked and I walked, my sleeping infant in my arms, humming herding man blues. And then I left, thinking how to give my family a better life. I strolled the ditch bank that morning, surprised to see pebbles and gravel Last night's rain uncovered such pretty blues and greens. Like I want my tears to reveal what's covered in me like that, but I was taught not to cry. I throw a stone in the irrigation water and where it gasps, my children's awestruck mouths glisten for breath for a chance at life, glimmering ripples calling me to be a better father. And it's right then and there that I realize I must start today 
Where the stone hits is the center of the ripples. Where the stone hits is the center that causes action. Where the stone hits is the beginning, brother. Where I am is the center. I am the stone that I once held in my hand as a little boy and I threw to see how far it could go. And I forgot that. And I'm 21 now and I'm making a change. And each day I pray my lightning self carves from thrown away woodpile days such a deep faith that cuts so deep to the knot core of my heart, giving me limb top buoyancy, an awakening truth that I'm a good man, a good human being, healing the earthquakes in me, healing the earthquakes in me.